On October 13, 2024, the Bathurst 1000 was in full swing at Mount Panorama, with crowds cheering for high-speed racing action. But the spotlight shifted to the skies when an extra EA 300 LT, tail number Victor Hotel X-Ray Kilo Whiskey, took center stage for a promotional flight to deliver the Peter Brock Trophy. What should have been a crowd-pleasing stunt turned into a risky spectacle that left safety experts shaking their heads. What happened? Why did it go wrong? And most important, what does it mean for aviation safety? Let's break it down in this video. It's just past 10 a.m., and the Mount Panorama circuit is alive with excitement. The extra EA-300LT, a nimble aerobatic plane known for its jaw-dropping maneuvers, is lining up to land on Mountain Strait, a racetrack, not a runway, mind you, with a mere 20 meters of width at its widest and a tight 8 meters in spots. Pilot Hayden Poland is at the helm, facing a 7-knot tailwind and a crosswind from the left, per the ATSB report. Those conditions aren't ideal for landing anywhere, let alone a steep barrier-lined track surrounded by trees and spectators. The tailwind boosts the plane's ground speed to 89 knots on approach, making precise control a tall order. Landing here was a gamble from the start, and it's hard not to question why this plan got the green light. As the plane touches down on the grass next to the bitumen, things unravel quickly. The left tire slips off the tarmac, throwing the aircraft off kilter. Poland tries to steer it back, but the right wheel hits grass on the opposite side, and the plane veers right across the track. In a rushed attempt to turn around, he pulls an aggressive maneuver, spinning the plane 90 degrees until the right rear tailplane crashes into a concrete barrier, stopping it dead 530 meters from the landing point. A media helicopter captures it all, clear as day. Yet Pulland later insists he didn't feel the impact, despite footage showing a jarring halt. That claim feels shaky at best, especially for a pilot with his experience. Here's where the story takes a troubling turn. The helicopter crew radios Poland, warning him about the collision and suggesting he check the tailplane. Damage there could mean big trouble, like losing control mid-flight. But Poland stays put in the cockpit, runs a quick control check from his seat, and calls it good. No shutdown, no walk around, no second opinion from his team on the ground. He taxis to deliver the trophy, as if nothing happened. That decision alone raises red flags. Why rush ahead when the aircraft's airworthiness is in question? It's a moment that feels more about showmanship than safety. Then comes the real head-scratcher. After the trophy handover, Pulland lines up on Mountain Strait and takes off, straight over a no-fly zone packed with spectators. The ATSB is blunt. This area was off-limits to protect the crowd. Flying a plane with a banged-up tailplane over thousands of people is a recipe for disaster. If the engine had sputtered or the tail had given out, the outcome could have been unthinkable. Mount Panorama's layout, with its tight confines and rising terrain, was never meant for aviation stunts like this. External safety standards, like those from the International Civil Aviation Organization, hammer home that non-airfield operations need ironclad planning, something clearly missing here. Thankfully, no one was hurt, and the plane limped back to Bathurst Airport, where Pullen finally spotted the tailplane damage. The incident left the aircraft with minor scars, but the risks were anything but minor. This wasn't just a bumpy landing, it was a chain of choices that put lives in jeopardy. So, how did this happen under the watchful eyes of regulators and event planners? Let's dig into the violations and oversights that let this stunt go off the rails. Now that we've seen the incident unfold, it's time to shine a light on the missteps and systemic failures that paved the way for this near miss. The ATSB report pulls no punches. Poland's flight path broke critical safety rules set by the Civil Aviation Safety Authority, or CASA. His approach and takeoff sliced right through no-fly zones designed to keep spectators safe. CASA's Advisory Circular 9121 is crystal clear. Aircraft must stay 500 meters from crowds when flying below 1,500 feet unless specifically approved. Poland's plan ignored this, putting thousands at risk. It's hard to see this as anything but a blatant disregard for the rules, especially for a pilot who'd navigated CASA's air display process before. Worse still, the ground operation was a mess. Pullen's application listed a display coordinator and ground boss, key roles for ensuring safety during air displays. But here's the bombshell. The person named wasn't even at Bathurst and didn't know they'd been listed. That's right. 
Poland reused a coordinator's name from a prior event without their consent, leaving the event without the oversight CASA requires. No one was there to challenge his plan or stop the show when things went south. This wasn't just an oversight. It was a deliberate shortcut that undermined the entire safety framework. How does a pilot think they can pull this off without anyone noticing? The application itself was another weak link. Pullen submitted a bare-bones document that didn't include his planned approach or takeoff routes, despite marking the no-fly zones on a display diagram. The risk assessment was laughably thin, listing only landing with people on track as a concern, no mention of the track's suitability, weather limits, or spectator safety distances. Compare this to his earlier Perth application, where CASA pushed back hard on similar gaps, and it's clear Poland knew better. Submitting such a flimsy plan feels like rolling the dice, hoping CASA wouldn't notice. That kind of corner cutting has no place in aviation, where precision saves lives. CASA's role in this mess doesn't get a free pass either. The flight operations inspector assigned to the Bathurst application approved it without digging deeper, assuming Poland would stick to the no-fly zones, they didn't check the track's topography, which would have shown the landing was a non-starter, and they skipped the required OPS, Defy Worksheet, a tool meant to catch red flags. Even a quick glance at Pullen's prior applications, like the rejected Sandown landing, would have raised alarms about his track record. Cass's lax review let a risky plan slide through, and that's a failure that stings just as much as Pullen's choices. Aviation safety expert John Reason's Swiss cheese model comes to mind, when holes in multiple layers align, accidents sneak through. This time, luck held, but luck isn't a strategy. And let's not forget the lack of a backup plan. Poland had no clear strategy for what to do if the plane was damaged or couldn't take off. The ATSB notes race organizers had a spare trophy and an off-track parking spot, but these weren't in the plan Poland submitted. If the aircraft had been grounded, say with a blown tire or worse, what then? Leaving a high-performance plane on a racetrack for the weekend without tie-downs or a cover? That's not planning, it's hoping for the best. This gap in foresight is a stark reminder that aviation demands what-ifs, not wishful thinking. The fallout? CASA didn't sit idly by. In December 2024, they filed a lawsuit against Poland in federal court, citing serious, willful, or repeated rule violations. They're digging deeper, and while Poland's license still stands as of April 20, 25, the scrutiny is intense. This wasn't just a one-off mistake, it was a pattern of cutting corners that could have cost lives. So, what does this tell us about the bigger picture of aviation safety? Let's zoom out and explore the lessons and implications. As we step back from the chaos at Bathurst, it's time to ask, what does this incident teach us about flying, safety, and the mindset we bring to the cockpit? Pullen's actions paint a troubling picture of a pilot who let confidence, or maybe ego, override caution. The ATSB report doesn't mince words. Planning to land and take off over a spectator-filled no-fly zone was a choice, not an accident. Skipping an inspection after a collision? Taking off over a crowd with a damaged plane? These aren't split-second errors. They're decisions that scream for scrutiny. Aviation safety studies, like those from the FAA, stress red teaming having peers tear your plan apart to catch flaws. Pullen didn't do that. He went solo, and the results speak for themselves. It's a humbling reminder that no pilot is above double-checking their work. The absence of a plan B is another sore spot. Aviation is about anticipating the unexpected, engine failures, structural issues, weather shifts. Pullen's failure to map out what to do if the plane couldn't fly out left him cornered, forcing a risky takeoff. The General Aviation Joint Steering Committee's safety reports highlight that thorough contingency planning separates safe pilots from reckless ones. Pullen's approach feels cavalier, like he banked on his skills to bail him out. But, as any seasoned pilot knows, skills don't trump a solid plan. That mindset, where showmanship overshadows preparation, is a trap we all need to avoid. This incident fits neatly into James Reason's Swiss cheese model, where multiple failures line up to let disaster slip through. Pullen's poor planning, the missing ground boss, Cass's rushed approval, all were holes in the safety net. Only luck kept this from becoming a tragedy, and that's a wake-up call. Aviation thrives on a culture of rigor, where every detail is questioned, and humility keeps egos in check. Pullen's history of sparse applications, as seen in Perth and Sandown, suggests a pattern of pushing limits. When ego drives decisions, the runway gets shorter for everyone. 
The broader lesson here is crystal clear. Superior judgment always beats superior skills. High stakes displays like Bathurst demand meticulous planning, not just for the pilot's sake, but for the crowd watching below. Cass's lawsuit signals a push for accountability, and that's a step forward. But it's on all of us, pilots, regulators, event planners, to demand better. Check your plans, lean on your team, and never let the thrill of the moment outshine the need for safety. The skies are unforgiving, but they're also a place for learning. Thanks for tuning in. Let's keep these lessons close and make every flight a safe one. Don't forget to subscribe for more stories that keep us grounded in what matters. Fly smart, and we'll see you next time.